That's right, the English Electric Motor Company have entrusted me with one of their zeros for the entire weekend. And while I've got it, I've got a bunch of stuff planned. Tomorrow I'm going to be blatting down to the South Downs with Smoky Bar off of last year's Switzerland tour. And then the day after that, hoping to go and meet up with Teapot One, Richie Vida, Lamb Chop Rides and the Missenden Flyer for some antics, potentially involving an aeroplane. Now the Zero SRF is the newest model from Zero. It has more power, more torque and a lot more features over the outgoing model. We're looking at just shy of 30% more output from the new motor in this bike. And alongside that extra power and that extra torque, we're also getting ABS, cornering ABS, and also something that was lacking on the older bikes, traction control. One of the biggest improvements of all is that as standard, the SRF comes with a three kilowatt charger, which means you're looking at a three to four hour charge against the standard charger on the older bikes, which was basically an overnight charge. So with all of those details out of the way, how does it feel? The first thing I noticed when I jumped onto it is that the seat height is very low. My knees are quite high up. I mean, with a low seat height, it's a perfectly accessible, commuter-friendly platform of a bike. Incredible thing though, it's just that amazing torque. Just you keep twisting and it keeps giving right from the very bottom. For the eagle-eyed among you, you'll have read on the screen already that the mode, this isn't a standard mode, this is called beast mode, which is basically everything on. It's got maximum power, maximum torque, sports traction control, maximum engine regeneration, because as you let off the accelerator and the bike rolls and as you're braking, it actually regenerates and puts energy back into the battery. Well, it's very easy to balance. But weight distribution is obviously just all down at the bottom. And so I thought seeing as how I've got a little bit longer with this bike rather than me just rushedly throwing all of the numbers at you and babbling like a burst hose pipe about the bike just gonna ride it a bit talk about what happens as it happens and to that end sort of simulate a real life situation where I've, I've picked up the bike from this and I'm gonna ride it down to the seaside in Southwold have myself a piece of cake and a cup of tea and charge the bike up while I'm doing that and just see how doable that really is because obviously the biggest problems the biggest questions the biggest challenges that always arise when the subject of electric bikes come up is how far can it go how long does it take to charge the range on the screen is showing me at the moment I've got 92 miles obviously it depends how you ride if you're rinsing the beans out of it everywhere you go you're probably going to get about 70 miles if you stick it on eco mode and drive Miss Daisy about the place you'll get just over 90 maybe 100 if you've got a tailwind the charging then takes three to four hours with the three kilowatt charger built in as standard before you can do the whole thing again rinse and repeat I'll tell you what that display is absolutely beautiful it's very simple it's very clear the sun is high over my right shoulder yet I can still see it very clearly you see we've got the speed in the middle battery temperature on the left motor temperature on the right there's a little symbol in the top right there for the Bluetooth which is currently not connected there's the heated grip symbols this bike actually doesn't have heated grips but they are available as an option we've got the state of charge down on the bottom left currently at 90 percent range at 92 miles down on the bottom right and there's the trip counter in the very bottom right corner Odo in the bottom left corner oh and obviously the clock in the top right and then the big dial around the middle that's an obvious indicator telling us how much juice we've got left also not quite so easy to see there's two little gauges around the outside of that circle for power and torque so as i twist the throttle those gauges climb up the circle and then in the center of that at the bottom showing us that the traction control mode is sport and then at the top in the center of that the riding mode is beast the custom mode set by the english electric motor company and then in the middle the big important one speed how fast are we going with our electrons that we're throwing out the back I keep going for the clutch and the gear lever just so used to having to, to downshift but with this it all just happens on its own well technically that's not true it doesn't happen at all there is only one gear the suspension is very firm but it doesn't feel like it's skipping or chattering so perhaps that's more by design than by bad settings oh, and the twist very manageable overcooked that one a little bit but the brakes did a very solid job of pulling me up and the chassis didn't get itself tied in knots as i was trying to heavily increase the counter steer to keep it lent over yeah, it changes direction very nicely. Regenerative braking thing is very pronounced. As soon as you let off the throttle, it's like you've 
popped a parachute out the back. I can feel the motor rumbling as it's harvesting back those electrons. And comparing this to the old Zero, it feels it's a little bit more stretched out, as in the, the position is a little bit more street fighter, it's a little bit more aggressive, leaned forwards, which is probably going to have the effect of putting a little bit more weight over the front. And also, I think the wheelbase on this bike is a bit longer. It certainly looks a lot longer. The bike has a very stretched out, almost Ducati Diavel sort of a look about it. Uh, let's take a little bit of a detour, add some extra mileage to this trip, rather than following the traffic. I said the fueling there. There isn't any fueling, but the throttle mapping. It's so easy just to gently thread on the power, and obviously the traction control is probably helping out a tiny bit there as well. What a delightful S bend! Oh, that was delicious! It's so easy to put this bike where you want it, and throttle snatch is. Well, this bike's never even heard of it. In fact, that S-Bend was so delightful, I think I'm gonna go back and do it again. Maybe even twice. That's enough of that messing around. Coastward ho, zero! And effortlessly the overtake is completed. And that was like litre bike overtaking instant torque nonsense. Oh, it seems like that engine... It's not engine braking, Andy. Wake up! Wake up to the future, damn you! That regenerative braking seems to get more and more pronounced as the speed drops. Very progressive. Oh yes, more of this stuff. The only thing I like more than riding on this stuff is riding on this stuff on somebody else's bike that's worth over four times what mine is. I actually think I personally, if range were not such an issue, would prefer not to have that level of, uh, of regenerative braking. That's in one litre plus V-twin style engine braking levels. Which again, if you're somebody who's coming from a big twin or even a big single and you like that engine braking, you can tune it into your bike. How good is that? You can change the characteristic of your bike with nothing more than an app on your phone. You can hear it doing its work as I let off the throttle. That's not the squeaky sound of an old-fashioned drum brake, boys and girls. That's the sound of modern technology creating power from the air. Well, from the potential energy already put into the momentum of the bike. But let's not get technical. There's a very, very confidence-inspiring attitude in the bends. Very rewarding to ride. I'll tell you what, if I could get the chance to have a blast on one of these bad boys in some proper mountains, I'd be as happy as one of these lads in the proverbial. I mean, if you lived at the base of the San Bernardino, so that you never ever have to really have ride more than 50 miles in a day to take in some of the most incredible breathtaking roads the world has to offer, I don't know why you wouldn't have one of these. Holy batshit on a sticky stick. Already up there speed-wise, give it another punch, and it just pulls twice as hard again. I managed to get so much grunt out of something the size of a bloody biscuit tin. Oh, it is a biscuit tin with some very tasty biscuits in it. it just keeps going and going. I do miss the downshift blipping though, and deceleration. I think that's something I'll always quite enjoy. Oh, here we are, Southwold. Right, let's take ourselves to the seafront, shall we? That's where the real magic is. You can save some power. You've done all you can, for now at least. Because although there are two USB 
power sockets underneath here in this storage compartment. There doesn't seem to be any way to route that cable to the phone on the handlebars. So I've been running the phone off of its own battery and it's now a bit dead, unfortunately. But thankfully, although the phone is dead, the bike's still on 58%. So hopefully when we eventually find ourselves a charging point, it shouldn't take too long till we get enough charge for us to carry on on our little electrical adventure. Before I completely cheat and use modern technology to find myself a charging position, I'm just gonna quickly blast up the coast a bit, see if I can't see some kind of a charging station. Now, obviously there are a plethora of apps, websites that can tell you where to find your nearest charger. That said, the battery in my phone is almost dead, so I can foresee the situation where I'll have to charge the phone off the bike before I can actually find a charging station. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. Yeah, I forget that I'm actually only just behind a helmet, so they can probably all hear me singing inappropriately loud. So obnoxious. Bloody tourists! Well, it does look like so far, Southwold is sadly undercated for in the electrical vehicle charging situation. May have to cheat after all. And then I'll catch you once we're located so we can uh, experience the charging together. Well, there you go, would you look at that? In the car park around the back of the Crown, there's this little sign in front of one of the spaces there. In need of a recharge, you're in the right place. Plug in and pop in. And it looks like I can just plug my cable in here and all will be good. So what I need to do now, open up the storage compartment here, which is currently stuffed full of my jumper, camera batteries, charging, drone batteries, sunglasses, all of this nonsense. So pull all that out. We pop open our charging port on the bike there. This is the only charging port on this bike. You actually need an adapter to plug into a three pin. We jam one end to the bike there. Smash the other end into this socket here. We've got a blue light there. That looks promising already. Oh, something's happening on screen. It says that we are charging, steadily climbing, two kilowatts, 2.3, 2.7. 2.8. We're at pretty much full charging capacity for this bike. Quite interesting to see actually though, while if it's charging, are the USB sockets powered? Yes they are, look at that. So while the bike is charging, my batteries can be charging at the same time. And it says we're looking at one hour and 35 minutes till we get to full charge. That's really not too bad at all, considering we were roughly about halfway empty. While I'm waiting, let's see about this Zero app, shall we? Zero Motorcycles Next Gen. Welcome to the Zero Motorcycles app for your SRF. You'll be able to manage all of your custom settings, locate your bike, relive your ride, and so much more. Remember to ride safely and enjoy your ride. Let's assume that that's our motorcycle, as it's the only Zero that I saw in the car park. And yes, I would like to pair, thank you. Okay, so it looks like you have to create an account. There was an error logging in. Okay, so that wasn't working, but I've skipped it, and now just the basic features I've got here. It's showing me that the current riding mode is beast, the battery is charging, and it's at 65%. There's a bunch of news. Now we've got battery manager. That's pretty handy. It's telling us the current charge rate, how long it's going to take, what our range will be currently, what our full range will be. And so the performance, you can go in here and actually change the dashboard settings and change the, the views. That's pretty cool. Or even set them all to none and just have an empty screen. Green. Very minimal. And I will leave those as they are. And in the ride modes, we've got rain, eco, street, sport, beast. We can create as many as we want. And sliders here to choose speed limit, power limit, max torque, neutral regeneration, and brake regeneration. God, the amount of customizability here is ridiculous. Odometer readings, efficiency readings, CO2 reduction, energy used, and also the money that you've saved versus gas. I'm going to go in this pub and have myself a nice seaside pub lunch. So I will see you in a minute when this beauty is hopefully fully charged up. Okay, well, I was in there for exactly the amount of time it takes to eat a honey roasted ham sandwich on wholemeal bread with a lovely portion of double beef dripping fried chips. We're up to 86%. If I were to leave it at this rate, we'd be fully charged in half an hour. So this current range is 85 miles. That's not enough for me to get to where I need to go to next, so we're going to have to stop again. Is that electric motorbike? Yes, yeah. Have you seen one of those before? No. There we go, we're bungeed up, ready to rock. Fear not, Smoky Bar, I'm on the way, though I may be late. Look at that, you can get a little indicator when your side stands down. That is handy. 
Right, let's have it. We need to go this way, I think. Because my phone is still only at about 30%, it's charging in here and I've commended the route to, to memory. There's another little test. I'm actually just gonna switch the mode to, here we go, eco. See what we can get out of that. Right then, let's see if we can meet a deadline with a zero. I think it's gonna be quite difficult to be fair. I may have underestimated how long I was gonna take with all the general faffery this morning. But obviously being in eco mode, it's now giving maximum regenerative braking. I imagine it's also gonna be limiting the torque, the power, probably the top speed as well. Of course, overtaking, not at all efficient, but Good to see that you have still got the grunt to do an overtake. I'd say that was probably about a 500cc powered overtake. Gentle overtake here. I'm going to be spaffing all of my juice. Oh, nicely done, mate. And that is us, unfortunately, now on the A12, which I imagine is going to be a relatively quick road, which unfortunately does drain these electric bikes a lot quicker than stop-start driving, I'm told. It's actually quite satisfying that when you get to the little quiet towns you make no noise you're not disturbing anybody you can ride like an absolute hairy ass hooligan out in the countryside but when you get into the town it's silence and maybe that shows i'm getting old that i actually consider other people's feelings now all right granddad and even though i've covered i think about 15 miles i'm still on 81 so we've only used five since we first started this could maybe come together sneaky bit of filtering go that saved me at least 10 minutes right that's how it works one car two minutes filtering mass it's simple look at that range has gone up by another mile now national again this is where we can eat up the time but absolutely obliterate the range i think we've got a bit of a headwind as well yeah look at that it's dropped by three in the last 500 meters probably doesn't help having a lanky wind sail of a rider like me on it either maybe i should tuck the problem is that I can't see because the peak on the helmet that's uh, not conducive to a longer life expectancy, is it? So now, as far as I know, we're just outside Ipswich, which I think was a fair distance along, yet the range is telling us still 67 miles. So those of you who know exactly how far it is from Ipswich to central London will now be screaming at the screen that there's no chance I'm ever going to make it. Give up now, Andy. Marvellous. Poor dual carriageway. It does give me a chance to try out the cruise control, which on this bike you find the speed that you want, push the button, and then we're locked in, cruising. I think if you want to change the speed, I mean, to go slower, you have to turn off and do the same again. If you want to go faster, give it the gas until you reach the next speed you want. Push the button once to switch it off, push the button again to turn it on again. And that's, that's the cruise control. A little bit clumsy, but it's basically just a latching button that you lock it at whatever speed is on the speedo at the time. We've had a disaster. I stopped to put the phone on and I don't know what it is because I was suddenly relying on the sat nav and completely missed the turning. So it wants me to go miles back in the same direction that I just saw was full of traffic. So I'm going to go a little bit off piste and see if I can't trick it into giving me more of a cross country routing because as I already said, stop start, small twisties, you get much better range than smashing it at 60, 70 on the dual carriageway. So there we go. That's bosh me a new route. We can go this way, which at the very least, hopefully, is going to be slightly more interesting. Oh, what a plonker. Managing fine without any aids whatsoever. And then as soon as I get aids, everything goes to shit. Well, we are down to 48 miles range and we just had a bit of a change of plan. But a quick uh, powwow with Smokey Bar. The original plan was I was going to meet him in central London. And we were going to ride together out of central London to his gaff, have a little barbecue. But the way it looked, even if I'd have had a tailwind and a downhill all the way, by the time I reached him, we still would have had to wait for at least an hour to charge up to get enough juice to head back to his gaff. So that plan's been canned. I'm just gonna head straight to his and find a charge as and when I can find one. So his gaff now is 96 miles and I've got range for 47. I mean, you can fudge the maths all you want, but that's just not gonna fit, is it? Right then, update time. Just outside of Colchester, battery charge is down to 22%. So there is a retail and business park over there. I'm gonna go for the gamble that that might be a pretty good place to stop and juice up a little bit. I wonder if Sainsbury's do something to do with electrical chargeification. Probably not, but I can use the car park to stop and have some internet checkerage. Let's uh, just pull over here, have a little check on the interwebs. This is the app that I've been using, it's called Zapmap. 
case she's talking to me, I'm going to go where this uh, apparent pod point charging station is and see what that's about. Yeah, I didn't need any of your petrol nonsense anyway. You can stick your dinosaur juice up your bot bot. Okay, so we have got the pod point app. Confirm charger. Please log in, of course. Uh, add a charger at home. Don't have one. How much would you like to add? Well, it depends how much am I going to get. I don't want to add a fiver if I'm going to take a pound's worth. No problem. It is free, by the way. You don't have to have any credit on there? No. Oh, really? No. Oh, that's good to know. No, you still have to confirm the um, charge. Ah, so gotcha. Yeah, there we go, charging. Oh, cheers. Have a good one. I'm glad he came along. So, brilliant. I can take all this stuff and go and have a quick coffee while I wait for this, I think. Right then, well thank you very much Podpoint for charging me up. We're up to 77% but it took oh, nearly two hours. So, you definitely have to be very, very well prepared with this kind of nonsense. Well, how do I get out? Oh, that is us finally leaving the A12. And after that stretch, our originally three mile deficit has turned into a 16 mile deficit. Despite me pootling along at a mind-numbingly economical 55 miles an hour, which is obviously quite frustrating because everybody's overtaking me thinking, oh, look at that plunker on his electric scooter, when I'm actually riding a snarling beast, which none of them could touch. Yeah, dual carriageways really aren't the strong point of this machine. I'm just hoping that in a few miles we'll get off of the dual carriageway into the city and the range will start to claw a little bit back otherwise I'm gonna have to stop and charge again and that's just gonna be embarrassing as it is I'm already gonna be four bloody hours late but I have to say cruise control what a fantastic thing I've never really used it on a bike before but it is brilliant you get to actually rest your right hand Oh, look at this. All that electrical juice over there and I can't have any of it. Water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. But we are hopefully coming to the end of this stretch of dual carriageway because we are currently distance to destination 49 miles, range of bike 33 miles. This is getting tense now. We are now 34 miles away from destination with 25 miles on the range. So we've clawed a bit back thanks to the 40 mile an hour speed limit on the A13. I am dying for a wee. Plus it's getting dark now. So I need to change the dark visor. So I'm going to pull into Thurrock Services in the hope that they have some kind of a charging station so I can get five to 10 minutes of extra charge while I'm having a wee wee. Oh, bloody hell. Well, it's not that dark after all. Well, sure enough. Ecotricity Electric Highway is available here. And look at that. I have to download another app. Ecotricity. No, I haven't got that one. I haven't got that one either. It's on the other bloody thing, isn't it? Let's go over there and try again, shall we? Hopefully this time I don't have to unpack any of the cables and things, so smash that in there, see if it starts up on its own. Well, it's registered a connection, but it's not charging. What surprise, I've got to put a credit card number in. Oh, we're creating your account, this may take a few lifetimes. Verify email address. Luckily I'm not in a hurry or anything. Success! I can now log in onto my account. So, now I need to scan the QR code. Sorry, this pump is currently out of order. F so now I can't get that out. It says it's out of order, but it's connected to the bike and won't let it go. And now the app's crashed. Great stuff. This is going really well. I think, if anything, the technology in this thing is absolutely friggin' amazing, but the network is just frustrating. We're unable to connect you to the app at the moment. Please try again shortly. Try closing down all of the multitudinous apps I've got open at the moment. Try again. Mm. That one's apparently out of order. Let's go and try the one that's really close to that incredibly dodgy looking van there. It's kind of reassuring, however, that these cables do lock into the vehicle, so they're gonna have to get an angle grinder on it to steal the bike away. Right, enter it manually because that's not working either. This is pump 1177. AC rapid, 30p per kilowatt. Although it just said it was free to charge. Right, so. Take that out, pop that, that's connected. Initialization, waiting for a charge request from the vehicle. And there we go, we're getting some juice. That is utterly ridiculous. It's charging at one kilowatt, that's gonna take eight hours to charge it to full. Oh, I might as well have not even bothered. Right, anyway, I need to go and um, evacuate. Hopefully we'll have got at least a couple of miles by the time I get back. 
Well, the plot does indeed thicken as I've come back to this pump thing, whatever you want to call it, and it had just stopped charging. I just want to get there. I've had enough now. Right, we are charging once again. Once again, topping out at one kilowatt. I need to change the visor and then we need to get on the road. Okay, so that's us at 30%, but I can't wait any longer. We've got a range of 31 miles, we need to cover 33, so our deficit is down to two. I'm gonna go with that, so stop charging. Please don't you give me any nonsense. If you end this session early, you will still be charged the full amount. You absolute buff. The slowest charge in the world would take friggin' hours to get an entire kilowatt out of that. I got 0.2 kilowatts in half a sodding hour. Right, now you can let go. And refer to your app. Why is it so complicated? Yes, stop the session early. Unable to connect, brilliant. That's just awesome. I can't take this out until this stops. This is unable to disconnect or reconnect, I don't know. I can't get it out. Please put the connector back in its holder. I would if I could get it out of the f bike. Holy Christ, my blood pressure cannot take electric vehicles. You've not been charged for this session. Good bloody job, because it was not exactly the most satisfying experience of my life. Ranty, 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 rant. Right, I'm going the wrong way. That's a great start. Hey, what though, on the positive side, to try this bike out in the dark. Exit, yes please. Those old LED headlights are pretty tasty, to be fair. A little bit low, I had hoped not to actually be testing the bike in the dark too much, but unless I find a hotel and meet Smoky Bar for a barbecue breakfast, but at least hopefully that's bought us a little bit of leeway. First off, we need to go over the M25, which means we're going to be caning our potential range, but at the very least we get to do a little bit of filtration. Well, for the sake of 4%, I think we actually got from the charger there, that cost us 35 bloody minutes. Shame on you, ecotricity, whatever it was called. Eco-trickery. Well, there we go, we're over the Thames. We're now at a three mile deficit. So thankfully we are coming off here. Then begins our suburban slog, during which hopefully we'll be able to claw back a little bit of charge because we're already down to 25%. So I'm gonna put faith in the range going back in my favor by being in town and hopefully cut a bit of time off. We're looking at an ECA of 10 to 10. Dear, the deficit's gone up to five miles now. It's going the wrong way, Zero, what's happening? Don't tell me that all of the charge we just got off of that ecotricity swindler was full of nothing but air and empty promises. All right, we are now just down the road from Orpington. Range to destination, 22 miles. Tank range, 19. So essentially I'm gonna be walking for three miles, but the speed limits are getting lower. The bonus of being this late is that there's very little traffic. It's a bit of a crap test of the commuting city action of this bike, but sadly it is what it is. Zero was supposed to have sent the English Electric Motor Company the fully specced out fast charging version of this bike by now, which would have made today a far more enjoyable experience, I think. But sadly, it just hasn't happened. Incidentally, now that it's dark, as you can see, the display on the uh, dash there has gone black, which I think looks really cool. Oh, we've just gone by Bromley Common with 17 miles to our destination and 17 miles on the range, so it might just happen after all. I was hoping it will go the other way now. We might even have a mile or two left by the time we get there. In case I can't actually find it or I get lost. Oh, no, it's gone the other way again. We are 16 range, 17 destination. Oh, I am noticing now, thanks to the uh, slightly stretched out riding position of this bike. Getting a little bit of an ache in the right wrist. I think a lot of that has been from the last couple of hours of trying to have such smooth and economic throttle control. But take this all with a pinch of salt. This isn't what the bike is made for. It's just more of a test to see if it can be done. And it can. I mean, I'm going to get there. In fact, look at that. We're now 15 miles to the destination with 16 miles range in the tank. So it looks like we're going to be okay, but it wasn't really biking, was it? Without the fast charger, without a bigger battery, it's just a bit drawn out and painful. It has been a real slog. I mean, the fact that I'm arriving nearly five hours late, that would be like with a petrol bike, spooning the fuel into the tank. Perhaps if I'd been a lot more organized, my hops between lily pads would have been more fitting to the range that I've actually got with the bike. I guess as well, once you've got a vehicle like this, you will gradually get a feel for which stations are good, which networks are worth using, where the free chargers are, where the fast chargers are. Come on lads, you've really, really spoiled my momentum here. So our bat 
we get a bloody shift on, eh? Yeah, that's right, we're cooking on gas now. All right, mate, after you. Just because I'm electric doesn't mean I don't have any feelings. Unbelievable, that's the way I wanted to go. Bloody roads closed. Oh, follow the diversion. That means we're now, once again, at a deficit. 10 miles range, 11 miles to the destination. That's disappointing. It would just be so good if I didn't have to stop and charge up once more. Don't think I can see another plug socket today. Mm, 20 mile an hour limit. Heaven. Definitely gonna gain a bit on this hill. That's proper steep. That regenerative braking is savage. You can't probably see just how steep this hill is, but I'm having to give it throttle to keep the speed up. Well, we are in the home stretch now, boys and girls. This is really gonna go to the wire. We've got 4.7 miles to the destination. We've got five miles on the range. The battery's at 4%, and I have been touching it up for the last 10 miles just to keep it going. Bit of a uphill just then, which really killed it a bit. I was on a two mile surplus, for want of a better word, but yeah, it's come down to camera was feeling left out with all of this talk of running out at the last minute and then the battery and that decided to die so I've just switched that and we're down to the last 3.7 miles with four miles in the range hopefully this is a nice bit of downhill oh, no, no going back uphill again three percent battery this is oh, this is not going to be good so let's just slow right down then shall we lads why would we want to coast keep the momentum rolling why would we want to do that it just seems frivolous slowest acceleration the world has ever known oh my god we're down to the last mile i think we might actually make this without any walking we've still got three miles of range battery at two percent oh half the mile to go i think at this point if it came to it i could even walk it gotta be honest i cannot wait to not be on this bike so to be fair my ass only started hurting about an hour ago and given that i've been on this bike all bleeding day whereas my bike my ass starts to hurt after about an hour and a half so it's good things to be said about the seat there we go 0.3 of a mile we've ticked down to one percent battery and one mile range no mate i haven't got time to stop you just you keep moving well w come on lads this is not a time for a south london mexican standoff i'll tell you what i'm gonna go then not having that and that is it. We have pretty much arrived at our final destination. So I'm gonna park up, charge up. Me and Smokey Bar are gonna have some hijinks tomorrow. So click the link in the top right to see the video of that. And I will join you momentarily when uh, me and Smokey Bar part ways. So uh, see you in a second. Thanks very much, mate. And I'll see you uh, next time. No. I need to put the old motor go button on. So there we go, that's the end of that little adventure. Smokey Bar's gone off on his merry way back home and I'm heading off to the next little segue in this weekend of testing out the Zero. For the, for the purpose of this little review, I have to say that day riding around with Smokey Bar, I was completely turned around. Yesterday with the, the long mileage was an absolute disaster, but today was an utter pleasure. This bike has been a thorough joy to ride. It's fast, it's light, it's smooth, controllable in the corners, the, the throttle mapping is absolutely delightful. And we managed to cover a fair old bit of distance, started off in Epsom, went down to Rikers Cafe and had breakfast, went along to Luland's Corner for a coffee, and then from there along to Lumi's to have lunch. And at Lumi's I had to beg, borrow and steal an extension lead to plug the bike into one of their three pin sockets and give it just enough juice to continue on to Goodwood where tomorrow's event will be beginning. And yeah, the bike continues to impress me. If you lived in the countryside and you just wanted a bike, to go and scratch around in your local area for an afternoon or even for a whole day like I did today. This bike is more than capable of doing that. And the best bit of all, it's cost me absolutely zero pounds. If you want to be pedantic, that's not quite true. Charging up overnight at Smoky Bar's house, it did actually use about three pounds worth of electric. But also, obviously, the electric at Lumi's wasn't free, but they didn't ask me to pay for it. And all I had to do to keep them happy was to buy a burger and chips, which, of course, I was probably going to do 
anyway. If we say three pounds worth of electric at Smoky Bar's house, pound fifty's worth at Lumi's, that's four pound fifty for an entire day of riding about. On my Yamaha, that would have been easy, 15, 20 quid in petrol. So essentially, all food and drink today was completely free. That's the kind of biking that I can get on board with. And obviously, as the infrastructure improves and as these motorcycle cafes, as petrol stations, as all of these places that you would normally frequent as a biker, as they start to have more and more charging facilities, then the usability of this bike is going to increase tenfold because it becomes no longer the constant chase of getting a full charge and waiting around for several hours as that happens. It becomes more that as your friends on their conventional dinosaur juice guzzling smog machines stop to fill up their tanks with the ancient fuel stuff known as gasoline, you could be just plugging the bike in quickly for a 10 minute charge while they're doing that. Get yourself a couple of percent. Next time you stop at the cafe for a coffee, get yourself another 10 percent and you'd be able to just keep on topping up the bike that little bit at a time. So I can really see machines like this being a much more commonly seen thing in the future. So yeah, with that phase out of the way, let's move on to the next step. Of course, there's gonna be a whole separate video about that. Check the link in the top right for more of these kind of antics. Crackly, what's a bit of WD in there? Oh, you cannot beat the power of an H2. Show me a sign! That wasn't particularly smooth. Oh, I don't get softer than that, Richard. And I will see you momentarily after I've finished and continue on my merry way. Thank you very much for having me along. And the journey doth continue. So now the mission is to get to, well, home actually, going back to my dad's house. But obviously I've only got 42 miles of range. I need to cover 84, so I'm gonna have to have a quick little dinner stop somewhere, get some juice into the bike. Which does mean that sadly, I've got a two hour journey, which is actually gonna take well, at least three hours. Thankfully, it's a beautiful evening. We should at the very, very least get to some kind of a position where I need to charge at about sunset. And then and just the last 30 odd mile stretch which is going to be quite obviously now in the dark so it was the last sprigs of sunshine dip below the horizon call them sprigs whichever sprig of sunshine hoping to get a fuel up well a charge up something to eat in milton Keynes. so now i'm going to get on see if i can race the sunset to this charging point There's something else that's just popped into my mind that was particularly useful today. I need to keep the cameras rolling all the time to be recording everything so that I can show you what I'm getting up to. And for that reason, I've brought with me on this trip eight batteries for my two cameras. But because I've had this storage space in the middle here where the tank of a normal bike would be i've been able to actually just use four batteries because i've been swapping them out every time these batteries are dead take them out stick them in the charger obviously that's going to be making a tiny bit of difference to my range but i honestly think that is a really negligible amount but other than that because i carry all of these cameras and battery packs and cables and all the other nonsense that comes along with making these videos when i stop is when this storage compartment becomes particularly useful. I can bung the cables, the cameras, the phone case, my gloves, bung it all in here, close it up, that's locked, out of sight, everything's safe, and I can go into the pub, shop, ice cream parlor without worrying about carrying a big jumble of things in my arms, because I always end up throwing them on the floor. Oh, so there goes the last glimmers of light from the sun. Yeah, I've just noticed that at 4% charge, when I give the throttle a big twist, almost nothing happens. The power is being heavily restricted. Obviously that's a good thing because it helps you to elongate your range in the last few percent of your battery. But it is good to be aware of it, the fact that your power will be restricted when you get down to the bottom. So if you get yourself into a situation where you need some power, it's not going to be there. And speaking of not going to be there, I'm desperately hoping against all hope that the charging point I've found is going to be there. If not, I'm not going to be left with a lot to play with. I've got two miles of range and the charging point should be one mile away. Hopefully with some kind of eating establishment next to it so I can occupy myself during the charging phase there we go there is the charging point let's get plugged in I'm going to see if we can find something to eat over there but that was close look at that two percent two miles right well there we go we've got 44 percent well, it's 45 a minute ago when i unplugged it you cheeky sod 44 percent of charge in the time it's taken me to have a bacon and brie panini piece of chocolate tiffin and a coffee in costa over there 46 miles of range 40 miles to cover 
straight onto unrestricted dual carriageway, but in the interests of not having to stop again, I'm just gonna take it sort of easy. What I wanna try and do is carry as much speed as possible through these roundabouts. Bit of a shame that the headlights are set so low because it means that when you go for full beam, it doesn't really make any difference. like that the uh, display is so white. Why has that not gone black? I'm confused by that. The screen really ought to be black now because that's really dazzling me. It never ceases to amaze me just how many roundabouts there are around Milton Keynes. I'm having real difficulty seeing to be honest. I don't quite understand why the screen has uh, decided to be so bright right now. It may buy in a mile just to try and sort this nonsense out found the lay-by, nearly missed it because I couldn't see anything. Take the bike out of driving mode hit by hitting the kill switch. Now if we push the menu button, takes us into the settings and preference, brightness and contrast. High contrast is on. What happens if I turn that off? I changed that earlier on because I thought high contrast would give us high contrast between the black and the white, not just completely switch off the dark mode. There we go. Now we're in the black. Okay, and then what I'm going to quickly do is have a look and see if I can figure out how to adjust these headlights. Okay, so in here behind the headlight I have discovered a grub screw sticking out the back there. If I were to screw that in, yeah, look at that. Headlight raises up. Yeah, looks like I'm actually going to be able to see where I'm going now. Always take your Leatherman with you absolutely everywhere. So here we are now just a third of a mile away from home and thankfully as you can see when they're adjusted properly the headlights are pretty good. This is dip beam, there's the full beam, get a pretty good vision of what's ahead of us and uh, yeah that's me pretty much home with amazingly 1% in the battery once again. So another far too closely cut journey there. Oh my, glad to see this garage door. So until now, mostly I've been getting the meat of the charging out of this type two charging cable. That's the one that we plug into the charging stations in shopping centers, petrol stations, all that kind of stuff. But nestling on the back of the Zephyr here, Zephyr meets zero, zero meets Zephyr. We've got this cable, it's a much thinner cable, but this actually has the same type two big fat socket on one end, a little electrical breaker box, and the instantly recognizable standard three pin plug. So what we can do to charge the bike up in the garage at home is to stick this, into the mains, reset the box, the green light comes on, you can test the RCD in it to make sure that it works, it clicks when you press it, the light goes out, press reset, comes back on again. You then take the end of this, and this cable is about four meters long, you can plug that straight into the bike, and as if by magic, the bike clicks a bit, it starts up the charging process. It stopped at 12 amps and 1.3 kilowatts. Now, if your power at home can take it, there's a little button underneath here, you press that, till the light flashes, blinks once, blinks twice, blinks three times, and then let go of the button. That now ramps up the amps that that's sucking in. So now we're up to 2.1 kilowatts, 19 amps. It means obviously we're gonna get a much faster charge. This ability to change the amount of current that this thing is sucking in is pretty handy because if the circuit isn't working or if you're using a really long extension, lead, like when I was plugged in in uh, Smokey Bar's garden the other night, every 15 minutes he kept on tripping out the uh, breaker in the extension lead, so it's quite good to see that by pushing that button, wait for it to flash just the once, that takes us to the lowest setting, which brings it down to 12 amps, 1.3 kilowatts. So that's about the level of a very small kettle now. This means it's going to take longer, but it's putting less strain on the electrical circuits, and if you're going to park the bike in the garage overnight, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's a closer look at how you charge the bike using your own ordinary home mains. I'm going to leave it to get up to full, and then uh, tomorrow, I've got to go and give it back. So I will see you tomorrow. Well, with the bike all charged up in the garage overnight, it's time to now head out on the road again for one last blast as I actually take it back to the English Electric Motor Company. And I guess it's kind of a good sign, really, that I'm a little bit sad about it. Having this bike for the last four days has really been a lot of fun. The thing is an absolute hoot to ride. But now let's be realistic. I've had this bike for four days. I can't possibly like everything about it. Well, actually, 
No, I don't. The usability of the bike has been, to be honest, both better and worse than I expected. On the little ride out with Smoky Bar down around the Moto Cafes in the south of England, I found that it was a very, very enjoyable experience. The bike was a hell of a lot of fun to ride. I mean, there is no way in any world that anyone could knock the acceleration and the available power in this machine. The range was actually fine. I had to charge it up a little bit at the last stop in Lumi's, but we'd already planned in an hour to sit and have some lunch, so that was an hour of juicing up the bike at the same time. And then I had enough range to get to where I needed to go. So with a little bit of careful planning, I actually didn't really worry about the range all day long and had a thoroughly enjoyable day of just smashing a bike around in the countryside and if you think about it the kind of bikes that would probably be equal to this in terms of style performance the brutish naked bikes the cb1000r the yamaha mt10 they've got pretty pathetic ranges as well let's be honest and i've even heard of people with the same bike as me the fz1 who are getting the fuel light coming on at 100 miles so they're not getting a huge amount more range out of their ordinary dino juice guzzling bikes but for those bikes of course the range isn't a deal breaker when it comes to filling the bike up again you just stop at any old petrol station smash some unleaded in there and you're off again and that sadly is where this bike for me this weekend has really fallen down as i've said over and over in this video if you've carefully planned if you know where those charging points are and you factor them into your ride you can throw the bike around in the lanes for the 40 miles stop for a coffee break top it up for half an hour while you do that smash it around for another 40 50 miles have your lunch break charge it up for two hours why not have yourself a dessert and then you can do the same after that go for another 40 50 mile blast charge the bike up for half an hour while you have yourself a cup of tea and a scone and then ride the final 40 miles home where it fell apart was the day that i needed to get from the seaside in east anglia to the southwest end of london and i ended up having to stop twice so for longer distances for extended touring in this iteration it's really not the best machine for it that of course would have been far more doable with the top of the range zero which would have meant maybe an hour and a half of delays rather than five hours but i will say all of this with a big disclaimer that's not what this bike is made for this bike is not made for munching motorway miles this bike is made for commuting it's made for fun and dare i say it it's made perhaps even for fun commuting if you ride to work every day 50 miles sensibly maybe 30 miles in a very spirited fashion and then consequently the same on the way home plug the bike in overnight rinse and repeat until your working week is over then this bike in this setup is going to be more than adequate for you because to be honest the charging is the only real thing that really disappointed me about this bike because in terms of riding it, I can't really knock it. I have thoroughly enjoyed riding this bike for the last four days. There hasn't been a moment really where I have missed my FZ1. I haven't missed the speed, I haven't missed the power, I haven't missed the agility. The brakes have shown me are very good. I have found the suspension to be very harsh, but I'm sure that's something that you could tune out because this bike does have fully tunable shower suspension, both front and rear. I just lack the tools and the expertise to actually do that on my own on this trip. The only one niggle that I do have that's bothered me a little bit is the seat is very low, which makes the pegs feel quite high but despite the low seat height and in following the high knees of a lanky bugger like me I haven't found the bike too uncomfortable it was only on those long slogging days that i started to get a really sore ass in fact you could argue that the seat is more comfortable than a bike with the range that this one is capable of really deserves so good work by zero for actually still putting a supportive and comfortable and usable seat on here one great improvement i've noticed over the older zeros is that the plastics not only do they look more like they belong to the bike not like they were just strapped on afterwards but also at higher speed or over bumpy roads i've noticed that they don't rattle at all there's no rattles no squeaks no shakes whereas the plastics on the older zeros i did find that they were a little bit more rattly, not quite as well fitted. The mirrors have been a pair of uh, solid elbow wagglers. I've had to quite often waggle the elbow to see what's behind me. But other than that, obviously there's no engine, there's no vibration, so they are stock still. And the quality of the glass is really good. There's a nice flat view that I'm getting there. There's no hall of mirrors action going on. The storage compartment has been 
absolutely brilliant. I have loved having somewhere to stash my gubbins. Because let's be honest, we all want to stash our gubbins somewhere every now and again, don't we? But ultimately, the thing that I'm going to take away from this test the most is just the fantastic performance of this bike. That instantly obtainable torque. It's highly addictive and very dangerous when you're trying to get a as much range out as possible. Your head says economy, your right hand says excitement. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the Zero SRF. Living with it for a long weekend, it's been a journey of exhilarating highs with a couple of deeply depressing lows. But overall, I come out of it with a feeling of really enjoyed having the bike available to use. I've just got one tiny little 12 kilometer stretch of hopefully twisty roads to go and then it's back onto the petrol machine for now. Really hoping sometime in the spring perhaps to have another go once English Electric Motor Company have actually got their hands on one of the faster charging bikes and perhaps repeat this whole experience again and see if with the shorter charging the bike is yet more versatile and yet more capable. Ooh, really didn't get to take it back at all. Yeah mate, we're 10 minutes away and I've just tucked the nose under. So yeah, that just about wraps it up. Huge, huge thanks to the English Electric Motor Company for lending me the bike for the weekend. It's been a great deal of fun and a real eye-opener to see what it's like to really live with an electric bike. Also, big thanks to you guys for watching this video. I hope this has been interesting and useful for you. If it has, give it a thumbs up. If it hasn't, if you think it's been a load of toss, give it a thumbs down. But do leave a comment and tell me why. If you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel and make sure you tick the little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any more videos like this in the future. I've been Andy Mancam, you've been a fantastic audience, this has been the Zero SRF and I'm going to go and give it back. So take care, keep them shiny and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!